everybody, it's Tyler, and we're doing our first virtual pits and parts interview. I'm so delighted to bring in 2498B. It's Bummer coming in from New York State. This team just had a playoff berth at WPI, and we're excited to talk to them more about what the robot is. And really, this is kind of a Frankenbottom, like a bunch of different awesome combinations of designs put into one. And I can't wait to jump more into it. We're going to be talking really all the way through some new additions they've been doing to it, more about their design, how it's all come together, a bit more about color sorting, sorting, odometry, auto, and of course, some of their match strategy as well, too. So let's learn more about this team coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Did you know that Fun has awesome merch options, including game-themed merch available at funroboticsnetwork.com slash merch? From cute thematic options to robots and fun-themed apparel, you can directly support Fun and look good at the same time. You can also become a Fun member or supporter through YouTube Join to get early access to most of our content. Thank you for your continued support. Jay, let's bring in here to talk more about this robot. I'd love to hear more about some of the design for it and how you're going about your intake path, the wings, just a lot of great stuff that you want to cover. Certainly. So I'm going to start with the inspirations behind this robot. So we learned heavily at the uh, Mall of America Signature event by observing a lot of great teams there. And we mainly took two important aspects from two teams that were widely different. So 9123X Shanghai Riguan greatly inspired our uh, intake here with the flaps. And this main, the main functionality with this is that we have the two ball capacity and two layers of that. So uh, with our robot design, it being a front to back under the goal robot, one of the main issues is ball capacity. And we implemented a few features, but this was the most important one to ensure that we have a adequate ball capacity for this year's game. Um, another main team, obviously, that inspired our under the goal inspiration is 334U Supernova Redeem. And um, their robot design greatly inspired us, but we tweaked it by allowing our ball path to be front to back. And this has great advantages, mainly in autonomous play, because it prevents us from having to do um, many 180 degree turns during both skills and regular match autos. So here to jump a little bit more into our intake path, we start here with our uh, first roller for our intake. And the main aspect about this that is pretty unique is that we have linear slides on it that allows it to pivot up and down. And what's cool is that while other teams do this with polycarbonate, we're able to do it using a pillow bearing and standoffs to um, allow us to use those polycarbonate pieces other places. And this is super unique and it leads directly into our uh, intake, which consists of both flex wheels and flaps to make sure we get adequate ball coverage. And then after this, uh, really quick, we'll run the intake to show how that works. And as you can see, the first aid roller also pops up very nicely to accommodate those balls. So now if you take a look a little bit closer in here, we have another central roller. And what this does is it allows our ball path to curve up. And it also gives a, our robot a little bit of an, S, <clears throat> of an S shape. And this again actually adds one more ball in our capacity right here under the brain. And again, these uh, extra ball capacity uh, ideas that we implemented it really just allows this robot design to be um, implemented in this year's game because to, holding a certain number of balls is very important. Uh, okay, so after this, the outtaking portion of our robot has a banded hood and it is pretty um, self-explanatory with this piston that allows us to go up and down. So here, Joe, if you bring it down and run the outtake just to see how that works. Yeah, right. So yeah, we believe that the way we incorporated certain designs, especially this um, S-Bend for that extra capacity, as well as our uh, Riguan for the two wide intake in order to have a, not only a well-tuned, but fast intaking path was um, super beneficial for our team this year. Hey, Jake, can we can we go back into the intake real quick? Cause something I want to highlight and, and have you do is you mentioned you have a two wide intake, right? Can we actually see yep. two blocks come in at the same time? And can you talk a little about how you're able to funnel uh, between two to one and how that process yeah. works? Perfect. Yep, I can certainly do that. So, all right, here we're going to demonstrate um, us picking up two blocks at once and we'll let it go first and then I'll run you through how it works. So, so as you can see, what happens is we actually gave the intake a little bit of um, a buffer zone to allow some natural fun funneling to happen, but we also have these polycarbonate pieces here and here. Um, these two on these sides are actually bending in to produce this funneling shape. And this is what mainly allows our intake to funnel, but we don't want to be super restrictive, which is why we actually allow our intake to be a little bit looser to um, kind of allow the blocks to funnel on their own as well. 
And we'll run another two. And then just let them come out the other side. Yep. All right, so I'm going to now jump straight into our wings. So the our wings this year um, are slightly different than what we have seen on other teams. And the main difference is this polycarbonate piece we have on the end. So we realized that during matches, a lot of um, situations we get into is a really intense wing battle where we are both pushing on either side of the um, goal to fight for that control bonus. And sometimes we get stuck in a standstill. And what happens is uh, we have our wing kind of wedged in the goal, but nothing's happening. So one way we wanted to implement this uh, polycarbonate wing is that when um, the balls are being pushed back into the wing and all of a sudden the other team on the other side releases pressure, it kind of flings back and that gives us that little bit of an extra push um, just because of the difference in material. So we really want to implement this kind of this fling of our wing after the, the um, tension is released to kind of gain us that advantage and can hopefully control zone during matches. So uh, again, what we do um, a lot throughout a robot is consolidate polycarbonate pieces and only use them where necessary. So in this case, polycarbonate would have to be used here, used here mainly for this, um, this type of uh, reaction that it has when released um, force is applied. So this is a pretty cool implementation of polycarbonate and we hope that we get um, some great results using this type of wing design. And now I'm going to jump into a little bit of our odometry and really just the compactness of this bot that um, we kept in mind while building it. So here, if you take a look at our drive base, we're running a standard 3.25 inch um, drive train with 450 RPM. Uh, we have two traction wheels. And what I really want to highlight is our odometry as well as the um, air tanks and everything that we're able to cram into this really tight uh, space. So here, as you can see, we have two sets of odometry pods. And right behind them, we even have our two air tanks that are kind of stuffed behind there. Um, we really believe that this year, autonomous play is super important to get that advantage because we're we um, are trying to see we're seeing that the meta is going to evolve into low scoring games. And uh, for consistent uh, <clears throat> for consistent autonomous play, you really need very well uh, built odometry pods that last throughout the season and are not prone to damage. And one of those factors that we realized is that. Uh, our odometry pods can get bent and uh, really just beat up very easily. And this was actually revealed to us at our first uh, regional event, where just after crossing the barrier once, uh, our, <clears throat> our odometry pods greatly bent, and that actually hindered our autonomous performance for the rest of the game. So what we um, decided to implement was an odometry retract mechanism. And how this works is that it is a 125 mill millimeter piston. And what happens is that once we retract it or extend the piston, once we, here, just highlight this part here. So once we extend the piston, as you can see, the odometry pods can tuck in. And what that allows us to do is cross the barrier and uh, really just play throughout the match without any odometry pod interference. So uh, after autonomous play, the odometry pods uh, through code just go up and we're able to play this way for the rest of the game. And this gives us a great advantage because it just prevents any part of a robot, specifically the pods, from getting further damaged. So obviously a lot yeah. of great thought that's gone in on this robot so far. I really also do like the, the wings that you mentioned too, kind of having that compliancy to it, right? Where it springs back, I think is really, really cool. And obviously with the odometry pods, I love the thought that's gone into uh, making sure you're not damaging that as well too. Let's uh, continue on and talk more about software side of things in your robot. Let's pass over to Benji to talk more about how some of your autonomous works, a little more on odometry as well, and uh, how you're implementing your color sort as well too, Benji. I'd love to hear more about that. Um, yeah, so with this spot, um, I was able to really watch it build and develop through the autonomous side. Um, so originally, when we were first looking at the autonomous, um, because we didn't have um, as sophisticated as uh, of like odometry system, um, we had simpler autons. So we started off just going into the loader and then scoring blocks in the long goal. Um, but as we developed those um, odometry pods that Jay mentioned earlier, um, we were able to do more precise motions on the field, especially using odometry. And that allowed us to develop some uh, better Auton routes. So now we're able to pick up seven blocks, score them fully into the long goal. We're able to do um, combinations of the upper middle goal and the long goal, which really helps us um, score more points and work better with our teammates at a lot of these um, big signature events, especially during eliminations. 
Um, so that's really been great for our autonomous. Um, and then again, I want to go back to the odometry. So as you can see, thank you. Um, we've got these two odom wheels right here. And so what those are doing for us is that's giving us a precise location of where the bot is on the field. And so our uh, autonomous is able to switch from just using PID to now using Auton. So now when we make some of our motions, we can do some curved motions instead of just straight, turn straight. It's much smoother, it looks better. And then it also helps increase performance. Um, so we can score easier. Um, it's much more consistent too. It saved me from uh, a lot of the kind of inconsistencies of a lot of the code. Um, and yeah, then I want to go uh, moving on from that um, odometry. We have this color sensor right here on our scraper. You want to give a close up there. So what's really cool about that is it can recognize balls before they come into our intake. So um, if we run the intake. You can see the red ball goes through fine. Um, go to the autometry. Yeah, so you can see if I drop in a red, that goes through fine. I drop in a blue, it instantly stops. Then when the scraper can come up and we drive backwards, it'll immediately stay out and make sure that we don't score that opponent block right there. So that's been uh, really useful for us, especially during those autonomous uh, periods. When we go into a loader, we want to make sure we get just our blocks and don't help the opponent in any way. We don't want to score their blocks. So it really helps to have that color sensor right there that can prevent us from scoring any of the opponent's blocks. Hey, Benji, can you walk me through uh, like what maybe your most successful autonomous mode has been or uh, maybe any autonomous modes you're looking at implementing in future events? Yeah, so um, one of the autonomous um, codes that I've been the most proud of that I've worked with a lot is the solo autonomous win point. Um, this has gone through a lot of work, a lot of trial and error, but we finally gotten it enough to where we can um, score nine blocks consistently in uh, three in the long goal, two in the central, and then four in the uh, other long goal. And that's been really successful, especially with, that's been really successful for me, especially with the odometry, um, to be able to use those curves and those precise points on the um, field. So that instead of just using PID, where it's um, one mistake can compound and create larger and larger errors, the odometry really allows us to get specific points. So then it's more consistent and it can score those blocks on a more regular basis. Joe, let's talk about some uh, Matt's strategy and how your team has been approaching here. You just got done competing at WPI. You have, I think, three signature events now under your belt and, and many others as well, too. So can you talk a little bit more how that strategy has evolved? And I know, you know, earlier, Jay talked about a little bit of how that meta is changing, too. So I'd love to hear your take on that and what you've experienced from that. Yeah, no, of course. This, um, this is actually my first year as a driver in Vax. Um, but I have, <clears throat> I have a driver. I, as a driver, have developed my own play style. I like to play very reactively, as in, I'm less focused going to a match on how am I going to score, how am I going to win this game. I'm more thinking, how am I going to work with my teammate to give us the best chance of winning this game and the best chance of advancing further in the tournament. So I personally believe that the meta is going to move towards very low scoring games, only a couple only a couple blocks in either long goal, and I believe that the meta is moving further away from the middle goals. So we're, um, I believe that uh, we're moving towards a very low scoring meta where control zones are key. So again, the snap back on the wing, very helpful for me because I get to, I just get to, I, I love playing with the wings. They're one of my favorite things on this robot. It's, especially at WPI, a lot of my games, I was just, uh, there's so much fun. I also really uh, think that it's important be to have this under goal design because this helps us um, be more mobile while I'm driving around. And say we're scoring on a long goal and the opposing alliance sets a screen. So they make a play as to where they try to push us off the goal so we can't score. We can drop this and drive under and around sort of through the alley to shake the defender, move to the other side of the goal, and possibly make a play either with the wings or with our push D score to win and maintain control. This is, um, so the under goal uh, has been very, very uh, beneficial for not only me as a driver, but the team's performance as a whole. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more in terms where I think the game is going. We actually, we're, we're just 
releasing a uh, analysis as detailing like Final Street WPI, where we 100% saw that, right? The event was won because they're almost at, um, not quite starvation, but just uh, not scoring as much, focusing more on D scoring, just having very precise scores as well. So I'm excited to see uh, what it brings for that. What, what for you personally, you know, looking at pushback for your future events, uh, what are you most excited about like moving forward in, in future competitions in, in terms of pushback strategy? <clears throat> um, moving forward, I'm of course excited to see how the right. I'm of course excited to see how the game develops, how the strategies develop, how the robot designs develop, and how that affects match strategy. But I feel as if, as to where we are at this point in the season, the uh, the match strategy is to a point where it's we're starting to see some end game, some end later season policies develop as. We said before with the bunny ears or um, increase in wing play, and the uh, we're starting to see a lot more under goal designs too. So this is, I believe that these trends are go something that's going to continue without the season, and I'm excited to see how new trends develop as we get closer and closer to Worlds. Well, I'm excited to follow your team throughout the rest of the season. So 2498B Bummer, thank you so much for taking time. Tell us more about all uh, this awesome machine and robot. You guys have an awesome team. It's been a pleasure to meet you and best of luck throughout the rest of the pushback season. Of course, we hope to see you at Vexrills as well too. Good luck the rest of the way, guys. Thank, thank you, you so well. much. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Did you know that Fun has awesome merch options, including game-themed merch available at funroboticsnetwork.com slash merch? From cute thematic options to robots and fun-themed apparel, you can directly support Fun and look good at the same time. You can also become a Fun member or supporter through YouTube Join to get early access to most of our content. Thank you for your continued support. Awesome.